to follow along properly, you need a Unix-based operating system like Linux or macOS. If you are in a Windows environment, then you need Windows subsystem for Linux and the shell that it provides. I'm currently on macOS, so I'll be using my code editor's shell. You can follow along with any code editor of choice. I'll be using Visual Studio Code. In your code editor, you'll start with creating a project folder to hold your code files. I'll use my file explorer and call mine examples. And then in it, create a Python script, which is a .py file. This I'll call script.py. So you should now have the folder and a Python script. To validate the importance of the shebang, you'll be executing a Python script directly to see what actually happens. In this script, you won't do much, just printing out a text in the terminal. So in here, you can have a print function with hello world. So you can say print, and in there, pass in string, hello world. With just this print function, head over to your terminal and you try to call this script directly to see what happens. Your shell should be able to execute scripts or text files that contain source code expressed in a high-level interpreted language like Python or JavaScript. So if I call examples forward slash script dot py, you'd expect to see the result with the printed text, right? But no, instead you should see something like Z shell if you're in macOS or bash if you're on Linux, permission denied, and then the name of the script. This is because, for security reasons, files aren't made executable by default because they could be harmful. But you can solve this first encountered problem by making this script executable. And to do that, you can give the execute permission to this specified file. To see what permission state this file is in before granting the execute permission, in your terminal for Unix-based operating system, you can call the ls-l command on the script. For this particular script, I see dash r w dash r double dash r double dash. Unix file permissions control who can read, write, or execute a file or directory. In this grouped series of characters, r is for read permission, w is for write permission, and x is for execute permission. So the permission string like dash r w x r double dash r double dash shows read write and execute access for the owner, and then read access only for group, and finally read access only for others. The first character tells you the file type. If it's a dash, that's a regular file. If it's a D, that's a directory. And if it's an L, that's a symbolic link. And in Unix-based operating systems, to grant execute permissions to a file, you use the chmod plus x command. That is, chmod plus x, and then the name of the script. Now, back to your terminal. To make this script executable, you'd run chmod plus x, and then the name of the script, which in this case is examples forward slash script.py. With this in place, if you check with the ls-l command again, now you should see dash rwx r dash x r dash x. The X in each section signifies that this script is now executable for the owner, group, and others. And with that in place, you can go ahead to try to execute the script again. So now, call examples forward slash script of py. After making the script executable and trying to run the script again, you should now get a different error. Syntax error near unexpected token, hello world. This is happening because your shell is assuming that your script is written in the corresponding shell language, that is, Z shell in my case, or bash if that's what you're using. The print function doesn't work the same way in bash because it's not a recognized bash or Z shell command, which is what is expecting in your file. The shell just executes your script with an assumption that it's using the corresponding shell language. Now to fix this, you know that this is a Python script so you need to tell the shell to use the Python interpreter. And here is where the shebang shines. So in your script at the top, you can add the shebang, which is hash symbol, exclamation mark, forward slash USR, forward slash bin, forward slash Python 3. Just by adding this at the top of your script, the shell should now know what interpreter to use. So if I call my script again, I get the expected result, hello world, printed in the terminal.
because now the shell knows to use my specified Python interpreter to execute my Python scripts. Let's look at some of the best practices and things to take note of when using the shebang. First of which is that the shebang is only applicable to executable scripts on Unix-like operating systems, that is Linux or Mac OS. Without a shebang in a script, your shell will attempt to interpret the script as if it were written in the corresponding shell language. Shebangs are not to be used in plain Python modules that are only meant to be imported, not executed directly. If you are to use the shebang, ensure that you begin your script with the shebang line and do not place any other comment before it. You should start the shebang with the hash symbol and an exclamation mark to distinguish it from standard comments. You should use the forward slash usr slash bin slash env command to avoid hard coding an absolute path to any specific Python interpreter. This way, you define what is called portable shebangs. If you have multiple Python interpreters on your system, that is Python 2 and Python 3, then you should avoid using bare Python command and be more specific or explicit with the Python 3. And finally, enable the dash S flag if you need to pass extra arguments to the interpreter.